Hey, how's it going? Well, just wanted to give an update real quick. Uh, we're getting, uh, my mother is getting my brother uh, a mobile home, small mobile home in uh, Tumwater. And uh, then we're going to be working at selling the house. My mother and I are going to be working at selling the house. And once she can sell the house, then I'm going to try to get to some place that's well, I want to find some trashy, really trashy uh, mobile park. And you might go, trashy, why would you want somewhere that's trashy? Because I'm tired of living somewhere that any sort of trashiness is, is negatively judged. Very negatively judged. I, I mean, when I was growing up, thing I constantly had to hear is, oh, how trashy this neighbor is or trashy that neighbor is because, well, they're not focusing on making their yard or all these things look perfect. And if they if they own a house, they should they should want to make everything look perfect. Otherwise, they're trash kind of shit, right? And you know, with that are all these little judgments about people. All these judgments I, I, I got to grow up hearing. All because people aren't putting appearance over functionality. I Me, mean, I, I like to put functionality over appearance. It, it's, you know, if it, you know, get it working right, then you can work on the appearance, right? Fine. But uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to be somewhere that I'd like to live somewhere that I can look however the fuck I want. I can work in the yard wearing whatever the fuck I want. I can smell how I want and people aren't going to negatively judge me uh, beyond maybe a personal thing, oh, well, that guy looks like meh, 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 whatever, whatever, but they're not, I'm not going to be treated like shit because of it. I want to live somewhere that those kind of judgments aren't there. The last place I want to, would want to live is somewhere ritzy. Or even somewhere that's really middle class. I, I don't want it. I've been I've gotten burned out on living around a kind of mindset that judges a lower class. Um, I've gotten so used to living with that that I want nothing to do with that mindset. I want nothing. I don't want to live anywhere where that kind of mindset is present. And maybe there's a sort of purely rebellion thing going on there. And maybe after I'd lived somewhere like that for a while, I'd go, eh, I'm not sure I like this that much. But, you know, that's that's tough. I would have made that decision, and that's just how it is. Um, the best time in my life that I ever had was when I lived at this shithole of an apartment. I mean, it was a shithole in Tacoma. I was paying about $250 a month in rent. I mean, it was cheap. Was it $225? Was it $225 or $250? Anyway, it was cheap. And uh, everyone there was trashy. <laughs> Just flat out. Everyone there was, was, was very... Uh, very poor. They had the thing of, a, you know, let's try to figure out how we can get this working, even if it requires duct tape. Duct tape. Um... You know, but the camaraderie, the togetherness, the friendliness, I would hang out at other people's apartments, they would hang out in mine. Um, it, it, it was, it was awesome. It was awesome. But it would have made a lot of other people very uncomfortable. 
but I, I thought that was awesome. It was, and the reason why I even moved from that place is because the apartment got condemned. And that's how much of a shithole it was. The, the building got condemned, and they and they gave everyone a one hour notice to vacate. So yeah, that bad. That's how bad it was. And even though those were the conditions um, of the place, I still that honestly was the happiest time in my life was when I was living there flat out that was in 2000 that was the happiest time in my life so I used to want to live in a big city I've gotten so burned out on that, and especially after all of this this new civil war that seems to be going on. You know, and that's going to be happening the most in these cities. That's where most of this shit's going to go down. I want to be kind of I want to be far away from that shit. I don't want to be around that. I don't want to be involved in in riots. You know, just giving my quiet little area give me a grocery store down the street that I, you know, I mean, as long as I have a vehicle, you know, and I can drive for, you know, 40 minutes or so and get to a, you know, a larger city, maybe not a huge city, but a larger city, you know, but be at a place where I can I can fully be myself, and as long as I have the courage to fully be myself in some small little some little town, um, things should be good. And that's one thing I found out. Uh, you know, you find out about uh, small towns. At least if you're in a part of the country that, uh, like you know, such as I'm in, I'm in the Northwest. You know, um, there is a type of genuine open-mindedness that you find in small towns that you don't find elsewhere. Now, everyone knows everyone else's business, but as long as you're honest about everything, they're like, well, people are people, you know? When you have a, a diverse small town in the Northwest, <clears throat> and it's not one of these ritzy towns like... Uh, um, oh, what's the name of one of them? Uh, uh, wood, something wood, wood. Well, there are some places up, you know, you, you, you go a little east of Seattle. Uh, uh, what is it? One of them, Woodenville. Um, there's, uh, I just can't remember the name of it. <laughs> But there, there's a number of small towns that are out there that aren't poor. They're they're ritzy, ritzy small towns, which is it's just weird. Um, or at least at the very at the very least, uh, middle class with very with a very small lower class population. And. You know, I mean, it, it, it. So, I, I'm not gonna say that this is something for, that you find in in all small towns because if you have a, a small town that's one of those ritzy places, you're gonna have the same. Oh, look at this guy. Oh, oh. He doesn't look like he makes much money. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I think the main reason why the Seattle freeze happened is because more wealthy people moved there and more uh, poor people moved away because it became unaffordable. And I think that's what's caused the Seattle freeze. That's, that's my personal belief about this. A lot of uh, gentrification um, and just the demographics changing. Um, I think that's what's caused that change. Tacoma's getting the same way. Tacoma's getting the same shit going on. And I don't... I would rather not be a part of that. I don't want to be a part of the this mindset that we're finding in big cities. 
Again, it's weird for me because I used to... Being in a big city used to be my big dream. Used to be my big dream to live in the big city. Live in, you know, like live in New York City or live in LA or live in San Francisco. And now I'm like, no, I, I don't want any of that. It's nice to live within a drivable distance to, you know, a, a larger city. But I don't want to be in a big city. And as I said, in fact, I'd like to be somewhere that's kind of trashy. Trashier it is, the, the more I don't have to worry about wh however I look or smell or act or want to live or any of that. It opens up me to have the freedom to be what I want to be. So, you know, that's the sort of thing that's been going through my head a lot. So eventually down the line, I am going to, you know, when I'm not, no longer living here, I am going to give a lot more detail about some things that I go, that I've went through here as an adult and as a child. And you'll get a little bit more of an understanding of why I take some of the stances that I do on things. But I'm not going to talk about those things while I live here. Just not going to happen. Um, so, anyway. So my brother is going to get that uh, small uh, mobile home in Tumwater. And after my, you know, we, my mother and I sell this house... Um, she's going to try to get me into a mobile home somewhere else, and I'm going to be trying to look for it at a kind of a trashy place. And, and the realtors are going to be confused when I say, no, no, I want somewhere that's trashy. <laughs> I want to be in a trashy neighborhood. Um, a place that I really, really loved, uh, but the the trailer, the, the not trailer, the, the, the mobile home was too it, it, it was a dump it was it was but uh, in Rochester there was this uh, mobile home park in Rochester that was just perfect to me I could even have gotten a little dog because it had a little fence and it had a little dog door but the people who had it who had it previously had three dogs that I guess they let just shit and piss all over the house so the carpet was saturated with dog piss. There were some soft spots in the floor. And even though they put a new roof on, there was still some water damage in the ceiling. Uh, the kind of water damage that you wonder, okay, if I remove this panel, is there going to be a bunch of black mold here? So that was a negative, but that would have been perfect. The rent for the lot, would have it was low. Um... But I imagine, you know, over the next several months, I will be, you know, I'll run into plenty more. And if I keep working with realtors, um, they can probably lead me to somewhere that's more of what I want. Um, but Rochester, though, was very friendly. It was so friendly. And there is this, just, just down the street, uh, uh, this really decent grocery store. Um, cable was able to be there. They had Comcast, so I could continue having a decent internet. Um, you know, but the but the 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 home was trashed. It was just trashed. That shit wasn't even that that shit that was so bad. I I, I question whether or not it was even worth two thousand. I said the floor, man. I'd say that the whole foundation for the floor would have to be replaced and then you know replace the ceiling and uh, and of course definitely replace everything in the floor on the floor uh, some of the walls were yeah that would have been yeah I'd, I'd say that's that that trailer probably wasn't worth more much more than than you know three grand <laughs> so um it's pretty pathetic 
but hopefully hopefully there will be something you know it would be nice if i could still stay somewhat close to the area so if my mother does need help i can still help her out um i'm hoping i can be you know within at you know at least uh, uh within a 3 hour uh, driving distance hopefully less than that but you know um if i wanted to live in like aberdeen or elma or uh Chehalis or you know rochester rochester what isn't that far though rochester is more like you know an hour and a half away from the Tacoma area. Um, uh, Montesano. Uh, and what, are, what, are, what is the town? What's that town? That's right on the outskirts of um, Aberdeen. Right. I mean, you just, you continue down as if you're going to head down uh, to Ocean Shores and you're heading down there and there's, you just, you pass by a certain point. It looks like it's the same town, but it changes names. I forget what it's what the name of that is, but uh, you know, there, there would be all right as well. Um, main thing for me, you know, are are there are there the necessities around, and is the town friendly? Um, you know, Aberdeen is a little larger. And there are some areas that were very friendly and some areas that weren't so friendly. But I guess I'm really just rambling on and on and on now. Um, but this is the stuff that's been occupying my mind. I've been spending so much time also just, you know, just in case, you know, what if I could get one of those tiny houses? You know, what if there was a way to to have one of those, you know, once once this house is sold, what if there was a way to get one of those? But then there's all these zoning issues, and that's 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 another thing that I that I I've been thinking about a lot. It's like, you know, these zoning issues and building codes for things that are on your own land. Um, I think they they almost guarantee homelessness. And right now, I don't know, here in Tacoma and, and, and all the way up to Seattle, I, I'm seeing tons more homeless people. It's Homelessness is increasing by a tenfold. Um, I think it's sad that some, so let's say someone who has a lot of money, they have a large piece of land, they can't just put a whole shit ton of these little tiny, tiny, tiny homes there for people to use because, well, zoning. Nope, you can't do that because zoning. Nope, you can't do that because building code standards. Oh, nope, you can't do that. And it's just like, wow, this, this shit is really... It's... We could be taking care of, of homeless... Of... of we could be housing the homeless if it wasn't for this shit. Um, you know, I understand having building codes for the sake of tall buildings, for the sake of, you know, making sure it's not going to crumble if there's an earthquake. You know, a place that is supposed to be a public place and not a private residence, you know, fine, I get it, makes sense. But something that's supposed to be a private residence... What business is it of the government to tell people how they what they're what they are allowed to do in their own fucking house? What they're allowed to build on their own land? What just I I think it's stupid. And some people, well, you know, oh uh, that that will keep neighborhoods from looking trashy. Because we can't have trashy looking neighborhoods because, you know, keeping up appearances is apparently more important than anything else, right? Oh, but if we have if we allow trashy people, little that'll allow the riffraff, and they'll and they'll destroy the neighborhood. 
It's not the trashy people that destroy the neighborhoods. Sorry. Um, <laughs> it's the... Uh, the ones who will have huge parties with gangster rap playing uh, loudly that you can hear from a, a block and a half away uh, where they all have their cars that run like shit, but at least they've, you know, oh, look, it's all jacked up, and uh, you have the uh, hydraulics and the expensive paint job on your uh, Cutlass Sierra, um, you know, having some big house party every other weekend or something. Yeah, that's that's the shit that's not that great for the neighbor for a neighborhood. You know, people standing out in the front at this party yelling, "Will you?" you know, I I don't even want to try to imitate anything, but you know, the people yelling obscenities, profanities, uh, 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 saying things that sound like it, there's about to, uh, fights about to start. Uh, maybe there is a small fight in the front yard. You know, that sort of thing. Yeah, that's the shit that ruins neighborhoods. Not just someone who's trashy. And it, it's, it's, it's those people, not the people who hang their clothes on a line to dry them because they'd rather not use a dryer. Uh, not the people who have a blanket as a, uh, as a curtain. You know, those aren't the people that 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 ruin neighborhoods. So, twenty-two. All right. Well, this is a long video. I just. I guess the main focus of this video just has to do with the whole uh, how anti-trashy so many people are. Um, and I think it's kind of sad. It's it's that kind of mindset is very superficial. It's very judgmental. It's definitely not a mindset that wants to uh, embrace diversity. It's stuck up. It's elitist, it's classist. Now some people could say I'm classist for stating negative things about those that state negative things about uh, the lower class. Well, you know, so be it. Um, you know, the only problem that I have is those that have a problem with those that look poor you know, it's the same sort of thing as you know well having having a prejudice towards bigoted people you know having a prejudice towards homophobic people having a prejudice towards really sexist people having a prejudice towards really racist people um, yeah I I I, I don't see that as the same thing as someone being racist or sexist or homophobic or um, classist against the poor. I just don't look at that as the same thing. And if, if you want to argue that it is, well, fine. I We're going to have to agree to disagree. Um, But yeah, with all this shit that's coming up, all this shit that's going on when it comes to uh, uh, this new civil war, man, I want to get away from that as much as I can. Just get the fuck away from that shit. I don't want any part of that. I don't want to be a part of a civil war. So. We'll just see what happens. Um, crossing my fingers that things can work out here and that 
this house can be sold for enough money that all of this stuff is even possible. So, um, you know, for years, my brother, to some degree, has gotten the shit end of the stick. And so this time, you know, no matter what, he's going to be covered. And whether or not my mother and I are covered the way that we would hope, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have to take a back seat. So. I guess I don't know what more to say. If you've watched this entire thing, thanks, because this is a very long, rambly video. So. <laughs>